Hi, this is Mrs. Hunt at Stoutfield Elementary, sixth grade, and we're here with Mr. Crossland today, getting ready to learn about exploring nature's biomes, because I do love a good walk through a biome. Hey, thanks for that introduction. Long walks in a biome. I love it. So, you know, we're been, we've been studying whole ecosystems and we've learned a lot about ecosystems, animal populations, predator prey. We've learned about the earth cycles, the carbon cycle, the water cycle, the nitrogen cycle. All of this comes together in something called biomes. I love this word bio, which means life. And this kind of sounds like homes, biomes, homes. So to me, this is like where things live. And there's going to be six big ones we're going to talk about. And not only are we going to talk about, you guys have already started your research on these. So we're going to look at the six biomes. We're going to look at some of their abiotic factors. Remember we talked about abiotic? Abiotic are the things that are not living, like its temperature, its humidity, its latitude. We're also going to look at some of its biotic features. And the biotic features are the plants and animals that live there. Now, I just don't want you to like learn about, you know, the desert. I would like you also to learn that there's the Sonora Desert in Arizona. There's the Gobi in China. And there's the Sahara in Africa. So we're going to study the big idea. And we're also going to study a real place. Now, we're going to start our lesson with this. This is kind of weird, but okay. What is this? Duh. Duh. He said, uh, this is, uh, it is a north and a south. And what would this be? Equator. equator. Now you might say, well, why are we starting with this? This is the equator. Okay. There's the North Pole, right? The South Pole. And you learned that our planet rotates, right? It rotates on its axis. Yes, yes. Coming back to you. And it also revolves around the sun. So sometimes of the year, the North Pole the North Hemisphere is more directly towards the sun. And so they have what? Summertime, right? When they're having summertime, what do they have? Winter. 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 Cold. Now, six months later, when it's on the other side of the revolution, these guys, let's take a, you know what? Let's take a closer look at that. Now for a closer look. And now for a closer look, we're gonna check out our globe. And this is a perfect model to show our equator, Earth tilt on its axis, and the Northern and Southern Hemisphere. And so right now, the way she's holding it, the North is towards the sun. And six months later, when you and walk all the way around, I go. now the South is towards the sun. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, I love that little, interjection of a globe because the earth is really round. But now why am I doing this? I'll tell you why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because it is mostly always hot here. The sun is shining direct rays. So any plants or animals that live here is going to be used to tropical hot weather. I'm talking, when I go to Brazil, when I go to the equator and all my trips, it is like I get off the, I get off the plane at midnight, it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And during the day, it's 95. At night, it's 90. It's 90 all the time. That is a abiotic factor. So the things that live here are always like that. Now, about 23 degrees north and about 23 degrees south, we have two other imaginary lines. These are called the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. This is called the tropics. These are the tropics, okay? If I could spell that right, tropics. And so it's always hot here. Here's my hard question. Here's a really hard question. I don't know if you got this or not, but how far, if this is, if this is zero degrees, this is zero degrees, how far, and this is 20 some, let's say 23 degrees north, what would this be? 23 degrees That's south. That's value, guys, come on, apply that math. So now, how far can I go what degree north is the North Pole? What degree north? How far can I go? What do you think? I'm sorry, I didn't understand mumbling. How far could I go? 
Could I go 40? Yes, yes. 50? What am I running out of? 60? 70? How far could you think I could go? 70. 90. When you get to 90 degrees, you are at the North Pole. When you get to 90 degrees south, you're at the South Pole. So, both of these will help you with your biomes. We're going to find that some biomes are in the tropics and some are there. Now, let me ask you a question. If you are a biome that's here in the tropics, would that be hot or cold? So we have, look what I've made here. This is a, a graph. On this side, hot starts here and gets cold. So this is going to be about 90 degrees. It works the same way in the south. And this right here would be about zero degrees. And that's why I wanted to use this, start out by using this. Now, hey, um, there is a line of longitude that goes right here, which is called zero. Does anybody remember what that's called, going up and down? I'm going to visit there in a couple of weeks. I'm going to a special place where the British Navy, who mapped the world, they said, hey, let's have this go right through our town. Anybody know what that's called? We have that street here in Indianapolis. What's the street that goes right through the middle of town called? Anybody? Anybody? It's a street called Meridian. And so do you remember, Mrs. Hunt, what this was called? Did the kids know what that uh, that goes right through the center of the earth? They should. What's it called? The what type of meridian? The what is it? And the class said? I heard The prime meridian, right? So the prime meridian is lines like this, and the equator is lines like this. Let me show you something interesting about the city we live in. The city we live in has a meridian. In fact, the street goes down the middle is called Meridian Street. We don't have an equator, but the very first road made in America is called our National Road. We know it by US 40. You know it as Washington Street. Washington Street goes like here. And so in Indianapolis, this is Meridian Street. Yes, yes? Mm -hmm. yes yeah. And this is Washington Street, named after our first president. It's also US 40. It's also the National Road. It was one of the first national roads that went from east to west. Now, the person who laid out Indianapolis also helped lay out Washington, D.C. He was an architect, and he said, okay, let's put a circle right here. That's called Monument Circle. Let's make this even cooler. Let's put a road that goes like this and one that goes like this. Northwestern, south, you know, different roads. And they said, let's do something else. Let's put a road here called South Street, North Street. I love it. This is how your city is. And then we came and made an interstate that goes like this around it. Mm -hmm. I-465. Now, basically, this is how... Indianapolis was laid out, almost like a globe. Monument Circle, Meridian Street, Washington Street. And so what's, what's interesting, this helps me understand the world we live in. I'm going to visit Greenwich, England, where the prime meridian goes right through London. And I'm going to stand with one foot in the Eastern Hemisphere, one in the Western Hemisphere. Too bad I can't go to the, I've been to the equator, but it'd be really nice to go to the equator to stand one foot east, one foot west, one head in north, feet in south. That'd be a cool thing to do. So this is kind of neat to understand this. It helps us with our, you're saying, what does this have to do with biomes? It has to do with biomes because when you look at the world, there are some places that are really hot, some are really cold as we go from the equator up, and there's some places that are really wet and some that are really dry. And I like to organize the world like that. Let's take a closer look. Let's take a look at the first biome, and it's one of my favorites because I love going there. And that is the tropical rainforest. So tropical rainforest is on the equator. Where would this be on our chart here? Where, where do you think we'd put it? Is it cold or hot? Cold. The tropical rainforest. It is tropical. hot. And is it wet or dry? Wet. wet. So right about here is going to be our tropical oh. rainforest. Now, it's called a rainforest because it gets over 100 inches of rain each year. 
a lot of rain and it's hot. Who can tell me uh, where one of these might be located in the world? Yes. Along the equator. So these are found in the equator. And can you name one? Yes. The Amazon. The Amazon is one. Amazon is one. So that's the tropical rainforest. Now, there is another type that's very hot but very dry. Anybody know what that is? What is it? So the desert's over here. And I always get this wrong. A desert. How many S's in desert? Okay. Only one, because a, a desert, because it's sunny and sandy. No, it's sweet. No, I, I, dessert's got two. So a desert has less than 10 inches of rain, less than 10 inches of rain every year. So our desert is over here. It is hot, but dry. And so it has a lot, lot, lot of different animals. So this, can anybody tell me a, a desert in America that we might study or somewhere in the world? Who's my desert group? Yes. What's one? The Gobi. The Gobi, which is in China. Now, Gobi's weird. That's a Chinese word. You know what Gobi means? Desert. So if you say the Gobi desert, you're saying the desert desert. <laughs> uh, Gobi's one. I lived for two years and taught sixth grade in northern Africa in a place called Egypt. And there, every weekend... I would go to this desert, the Sahara, Sahara Desert, and one of my favorite deserts, I lived two years in Arizona, and I would, when I was a kid, I would go out to the Sonora, Sonora Desert, may have spelled that wrong, Sonora Desert, which was in Arizona down in New Mexico. So deserts are different biomes, they're dry, they're hot, but they're very filled with animals and diverse. What's okay, so one of those that we're going to study next is the grasslands. Where are grasslands? Are they hot? Are they dry? Are they cold? Are they wet? Where do we find grasslands usually, do you think? Yes? What do you think? Anybody? They're kind of everywhere. They're kind of everywhere, but they're not way up here. They're not way down here. So I would say the grasslands are right about here. In so the middle. in the middle, near the, near the uh, it's, I'd say maybe you can, you'll you'll have to do your research. So the grasslands, and we actually have some of these in Indiana. What's the grasslands in America called? Anybody know the Great what region? The, you ever heard of the Great Plains? Okay. What about in Africa? What is it called? You guys ever seen the Lion King? <laughs> huh? The savanna or the Ser. In Getty, the Serengeti, or the savanna, the savanna. Okay, and there's even the steppes. There's all other grasslands in the world. Grasslands, pretty cool and biome. You guys will study. What's another biome here in Indiana? One that's kind of cool. What is it? The deciduous. The deciduous forest. Now the deciduous forest. I'm going to put it kind of overlapping, and we spell that. Spell it for me. Okay. The deciduous forest, it gets cold, it gets hot, it gets wet and dry. It's different from a tropical rainforest, the deciduous forest, and we'll come back to both of these in just a moment. All right, that's, so here's one, here's two, here's three, we're going to study six, here's four. What else? What else do we have? Ladies, what else do we have, Jim? The what? Tundra. The tundra. So the tundra, where should the tundra go in here? Um, is it hot or cold? Cold, cold? cold, so it's up north. And is it wet or dry, the tundra? Dry. So there's, maybe we'll put it right about here. How do you spell tundra for me? T-U-N-D-R-A. The tundra. And we have tundras in different places of the world. All right, so that's number five. Can you guys name a tundra that's somewhere in the world? Arctic. The Arctic, okay. Arctic tundra, any more? Alpine. An alpine tundra, okay. All right, and that leaves us one more biome to talk about. What is it? Boreal. Boreal forest. So boreal forest is a little bit drier than that frogs in it. Let me move that. How do you spell that? B-O-R-E-A-L. 
Boreal forest. Now, uh, you've probably heard of Boreal up north. It's way up north. There's light, uh, the northern lights. And so we have these biomes around the world. Now, there's one that's been left out. One thing that's been left out that we need to talk about. And that is these. You know what these are? Mountains. Mountains. There could be mountains anywhere in the world. Some of them have been pushed up by plate tectonics. Some of them are volcanoes. So you could be in a tropical rainforest, but if there's a large mountain, it's going to be different. You could be in the grasslands, and there might be a volcano. For example, out west, there is like the Great Plains, but there in Wyoming, there's a place called Devil's Tower, which is a leftover volcano. And Or you could be in the boreal forest. So mountains change things a little bit. So I want you to think about the mountains that also do change some of these biomes. Okay, let's take a closer look. Grasslands. Yeah, what did you learn about the grasslands? We learned that their summer temperatures can be up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit and their winter degrees can be below 25 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And what are some of the things in your book? Show me what's in your book about grasslands. I'm sloppy. Well, there's some flightless birds that live in grasslands. Cool. An ostrich. An ostrich, what else? A and a reha. A reha from Australia. Nice. That, I'll tell you that grasslands are in South America, Australia, and Africa. Keep working, I'll come back to you. What are you guys studying? We are learning about the boreal forests. What have you learned about the boreal forests? That it is in Canada, Asia, and Europe. And nice. It, and the and term boreal means northern. That's why it's in the yes. northern. Tell me that again. The term boreal means northern, and that means it's in the northern hemisphere. In the northern hemisphere. Anybody else have anything to add? Good. I'll be back. That, yeah. Go ahead. It has some. It has some of the animals that uh, live there, like the snowshoe hare and the lynx, the prey and predator, and then the plants there, the carnivorous trees. They have. Um, Conifer trees. Conifers. Conifers trees. And they're coming, they have seeds and cones that have little leaf shapes like needles. Also, it's the largest biome in the world. And it's really? Prepared, and yes. it's referred to the Russian name, the taiga. Taiga? Taiga. Taiga. Cool. That's a lot of stuff to learn. We are doing the deciduous forest. Easy for you to say this. Is the what? <laughs> and... The fact that I know is that animals... Yes, yes. Inquiring minds want to know. What about animals in deciduous forests? They adapt to their habitat. Excellent. They adapt their habitat. Go ahead, add some more to this, the rest of you. Yes? It's one of the biggest forests in the world. One of the biggest. Excellent. Air pollution and water pollution is sending ecosystems out of balance. Okay, got to watch out for that. And what do you have to add? The average temperature of the rainforest is about... The deciduous forest, right? Yeah, um, is about 30 to 60 inches of um, a year. Excellent. There's more to learn. We have that here in Indiana. We are um, re researching the tundra, and Lisa's going to tell you all about it. Oh, so that's a good pass off. So. <laughs> okay, I see you guys do using your, your books. Please, what do you know about the tundra? You've been nominated. There are two types of tundras Arctic tundra and the alpine tundra. Excellent. Tundras can be called ice deserts and frozen prairie. The Arctic tundra sees little rainfall. Little rainfall like the cold desert of Russia. There are there's an underwear of soil called permafrost. And is permafrost is it frozen? It remains frozen at all times. Excellent. Animal species occupying the tundra consist of poor bears, caribou, musk, muskox, gray wolves, lemmings, rabbits, squirrels. And birds such as penguins, falcons, ravens, and and terns and loons. Do you know the Arctic tern holds the world's record for migration? It flies from the north to the south pole. Seems like a lot of traveling. I gotta say, nice job. Hey, you picked a good one to be. <laughs> good job. You guys are what? The desert. The desert. desert. What do you know about the desert? Anybody? 
The mm -hmm. summer temperature for a cold desert is around 21 to 26 degrees Celsius. Um, That's a cold desert, right? The climate, you can change very drastically. Like, it can be 100 degrees Fahrenheit on a summer afternoon, but then it can drop 20 to 30 degrees by night. Boy, well, I got, do I have a story to tell you about that here in just a minute. Anything else about the desert? Not many plants and animals can survive because of how hot and dry it is. Yeah, you know, they really need to have adaptations because it's really hot, really dry. They'd be in trouble without those adaptations. Anything else? It only gets 10 inches of rain. Every or year. less. 10 or inches? Less. Of, yeah. Each year. Excellent. Desert, Homer. What are you guys studying? The tropical rainforest. What do you know about it? That there's two different types. Really? Tell me about them. There's a temperate. Temperate and? And there's a tropical. Tropical. Tropical is probably hot all the time. What do you guys have to say about these? The tropical rainforest is close to the equator. Very good. Anybody else? Anything else about tropical rainforest? The tropical rainforest is usually moist and hot. Moist and hot. What about diversity? What do you know about diversity? Do you think there's a lot of critters and creatures in the tropical rainforest? There's 10 million species. Are How many million? 10 million. 10 million. That's pretty diverse. Okay, so I've learned a lot of new facts about this. Most of the things I know about the biomes are the places that I've gone. For example, I'm going to tell you one, one interesting, to me it's very interesting. A deciduous forest here in Indiana, during the summer I take kids to Morgan Monroe State Forest on our Science Summer Safari. And if I go find an area that say, let's say I find an area that's one meter, 100 meters by 100 meters, we call it a hectare, right? In that area there might be 100 100 trees, but there's only six types. So there will be like 15 poplar, 15 conifer, 15 oak. So there's 100 trees, but there's only six types. When I go to the Amazon, that same area will have 100 trees, but they're all different. I'll find a kapok tree. I won't find another kapok tree for maybe a mile away. I'll find a Brasilia tree. I'll, so what I'm trying to say is that here they have many types of trees, maybe 80 different types of trees. Here they have six trees. I'll tell you another example. Well, my house, I have a hummingbird feeder, and I have one type of hummingbird that comes there, a ruby-throated hummingbird. And maybe there's five or six of them. When I was in Brazil, on the boat, we put out a hummingbird feeder, and 20 hummingbirds came to it, 15 different types of hummingbirds. We call that diversity. In these areas, this area right here is very diverse. In fact, some people say that the Amazon is the lungs of the planet from all the air that comes in and the water that goes out and all the animals. In the Amazon River, some scientists say there's more different species of fish than in the ocean. We found at least seven different types of fish that never even been named before. So this is kind of cool. Here, very diverse. Here, very rich, not as diverse. And wherever you go, the grasslands, each of these are different because of their biotic factors and abiotic factors. I'll tell you, the grasslands need grass. Where does the grass come from? The rains and the suns. So in a grassland, when, the, when it dries up, the grass starts to die. The grass that's been eating. What is an animal that eats grass called? A herbivore, right? And so the herbivores eat the grass. And you might think the grass is all gone. But if the grass was left alone, it would grow four, five feet tall. And underground, the roots go down four, five, six feet deep. The tops die off. It gets dry. What do the grasses wait for? Water. The water, the rains to come back. When the rains come back, they sprout, the grasses grow, and the grasses are having a good life. But what follows the grasses? The herbivores, herds. In Africa, it's wildebeest, it's antelope, it's giraffe, it's rhinos. In the Great Plains, it's bison, it's different types of antelope, it's deer, it's springbuck, it's all those things that follow. Now, what follows the herbivores? Carnivores. Carnivores. In Africa, it's the hyenas, the lions, the leopards, the cheetahs that migrate and follow the herbivores. Out west, it's the cougars, the bobcats, the grizzlies. 
and this is in a nice balance. So it, these biomes have to do with both biotic features, the plants and animals, and abiotic, the heat, the cold, the wet, the dry. As you continue to study this, they're great places to visit. I hope you get to visit as many as I have. And boys and girls, that is a wrap. Thank you, Mr. Crossland, for coming and teaching us about the six biomes of the world.